I'm going to walk you through the process of preparing vector artwork for a direct-to-film or hybrid digital transfer. Now, I'm on the Supacolor website, and they've done a great job of creating artwork specifications. The Supacolor transfer is different from a DTF transfer in that it's a hybrid digital transfer. So instead of printing through an inkjet printer onto the film, they're actually using a digital offset printer with printing plates, and they're screen printing that white underbase. The artwork preparation process is the same for both types of transfers. I'm going to start off by customizing a vector graphic from the Graphics Flow online graphics platform. I'm logged into my Graphics Flow account. I've selected Design Ideas. I'm going to click on this template, and then I'm going to select Customize to begin the editing process. I'm just going to make a couple changes to this graphic. I'm going to go and change the location to Daytona Beach. I'm going to hit Enter, and then I'm going to change one of the colors in the graphic. So I'm going to go down to the color list here. I'm going to select one of the colors, and then I'm just going to change this to orange. Then I'm going to click on Apply. I'm going to save the design, and it's going to be saved to my Graphics Flow account. And then I'm going to download a production file. Now, in this case, I can download three different types of files. I can download a PNG file. This is a bitmap file. We want to ultimately have vector artwork. So I would download a PDF file if I was using Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, or the freeware program Inkscape. If I'm going to edit this file in CorelDRAW, I'm going to download the native CDR file. I'm then going to open the file in CorelDRAW. The steps for getting the file ready are identical in Adobe Illustrator, Affinity, Designer, Inkscape, but the names of the features are slightly different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View, Wireframe. In Illustrator, it would be called Outline View, and I want to see what's going on and verify this is vector artwork. We know this is vector artwork because if we select this text right now, you can see it's highlighting the text. This is live text. If this file was a bitmap, it would look like this. It would look like a, a collection of pixels. I'm going to undo that, and we're going to go back to our vector art. You see this circle right here. This circle is where the text is following along the path. That circle has no properties like an outline or fill properties, so it's not going to print, so we don't have to do anything with But we did establish that this is vector artwork. Let's take a look at the guidelines for vector artwork on the Supercolor website. So they're asking us to check the line weight, make sure free-floating lines are one point, minimum convert fonts to outlines or shapes. They're recommending a PDF file for vector. And then under Vector Artwork, they're suggesting CMYK. RGB will be converted to CMYK colors. And they're also saying it's okay to use Pantone colors using the PMS color codes. Convert fonts to outlines, convert strokes to objects. I'm going to walk through those steps back in CorelDRAW. I can see there's an outline around the word North Shore. Just from experience, I know that this width is going to be wide enough to print, but I can just select on that object. And if I go down here to my outline tool, I can double click on it or I can just hover my mouse over it and it'll tell me that this is a four point outline. If I switch this down to 0.5, this is below the outline width that the printers are capable of printing. We just want to make sure that this outline is one point or larger. So I'm just going to switch out the outline to three points. Then I'm going to click on OK. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to convert any outlines in the graphic to objects. And if I select this word right here and I go back to my view and wireframe view, you notice that the outline isn't showing up in the graphic. And that's because outlines don't have vector properties. In the world of Adobe Illustrator, we would call these strokes. So what we want to do is we want to convert that outline to a vector property so that if we scale the design up or down, we're not going to have the outline become distorted. For instance, if you scale it up, the outline will look slightly smaller. If you scale it down, it'll start to fatten up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Object, and I'm going to select Convert Outlines to Objects. So we've taken care of the outlines. We've made sure that the outline point size is within parameters, and we've converted the outlines to objects. Next, we're going to talk about the colors in the graphic. And because this is vector artwork, I can select on an object to see what colors are going on. So if I go over here and select this object right here, I'm going to ungroup it. The navy is a Pantone color. And let's check the orange. Well, the orange is an RGB color. That's going to be problematic for the DTF or hybrid digital printing process. We need to get this color to either a Pantone or a CMYK color. Now, in Corel, if I go over here to the little paint bucket, I can just double click on the bucket and I can switch this color over to CMYK, but you'll notice a color shift as soon as I do that. And the reason for that is the CMYK color palette isn't as broad of a color palette as RGB. So RGB has a larger color gamut. 
Therefore, the colors can be slightly brighter, more vibrant. So anytime we convert an RGB color down to CMYK, there is going to be a slight color shift. Depending on the color, sometimes it won't be noticeable, but certain colors, you're going to see a pretty significant shift. Now, if I choose to go with Pantone colors, in the case of Supacolor, one of the advantages of the Supacolor technology is they have the ability to do Pantone color matching. So if I use colors from the Pantone matching system over here, they can match to those colors and get very good color accuracy. And that's one of the advantages of using Supacolor when you get your transfers made. This file is ready to go. I've applied Pantone colors to the orange. The blues are already Pantone colors. And these colors are optimized for a Supacolor transfer. If your transfer supplier doesn't have the ability to match Pantone colors or you have RGB colors in your graphic, you're going to need to recolor your graphic to CMYK colors. So I'm going to select this object right here and I've opened up a CMYK color palette in Corel and I notice there isn't a color that's a close match to this particular color. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object. I'm going to click on the little color bucket down here and I'm going to make sure that this color is set to CMYK. And as soon as I set it to CMYK, You'll see the before color and the after color is just a slight bit of color shift there, but nothing that's very noticeable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the dropper. I'm going to sample this color, which is CMYK, and then I'm going to drop it onto this text right here. You notice that the little bucket became a solid square. That means you're changing the fill color. If it's an outline, it means you're changing the outline color. I'm going to do the same thing right here and right here. So we've taken care of that particular color. I'm going to do the same thing for the navy. So I'm going to select this object. I'm going to double click on the bucket. I'm going to make sure if I go to color view that we're set to CMYK. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to grab my dropper, sample the color, and drop that new color in there. And that's a really good match. We're not seeing much of a, a difference there. Now I will have to zoom in pretty tight here to get this one. So we're just going to sample that. And then we're going to drop that in there. And lastly, we need to do the orange. So I'm going to select the orange, go over here to the color bucket, click on color viewers, make sure this is set to CMYK, click on OK, and then again, I'm going to grab the dropper. And there's other ways to recolor images using the various tools of your vector graphics program, but we just did a very simple manual recolor of the graphic. The final art preparation step is converting the text and the graphic to curves. So when I downloaded this file from Graphics Flow, it had live text in the CDR file. Now, if I had downloaded the PDF file, the text would have already been converted to curves. So the reason I can tell this is still live text is if I click on the word shark here, you'll notice the Tradewinds font is displayed. So what I want to do is take all of the text in this graphic and convert it to curves. In Adobe Illustrator, it would be converting it to outlines. I'm going to go over here to the object menu. I'm going to select the whole graphic and click on convert to curves. And now the text is no longer live text. I can't go back and change it but I'm not going to have a problem with the graphic looking different if I open this up into another program where I might be printing it. So the whole concept behind converting text to curves is avoiding font substitutions and issues in programs that might shift the way that the fonts look. Most transfer suppliers, including Supacolor, recommend the PDF file format. The reason for that is the PDF format is a universal format and it will preserve the original image quality. In most graphics programs, you have the ability to create a PDF file, whether it's using the export function or printing to a PDF driver. In Corel, you would go to File, you'd go to Publish to PDF, and then you'd select the preset for editing. The editing preset ensures that nothing is going to change in the graphic. One thing you can do when you select this preset is go to settings, make sure that any setting for color profiles is turned off. So I'm going to turn off any kind of color profile, and then I'm going to go over here to objects. And if I'd like to, I can have it convert all the text to curves. So I wouldn't have to do that in the graphic if I plan on doing that when I create the PDF file. So once I've selected my settings, I'm going to name the file. I'm going to select a location where I'm going to save it. I'll put it on my desktop and I'll simply click on save. This is the PDF file that you'll be submitting to your supplier. This file is an exact duplicate of the original vector graphic and is ready for production. Not only does Supacolor make a wonderful hybrid digital heat transfer, but also they'll work with you on the artwork. If the artwork aspects are confusing to you and you don't exactly know how to prepare the artwork, if you send that artwork file into Supacolor, they're going to work with you and they're going to try to fix it on their end. The GraphicsFlow online platform has thousands of vector graphics that are production ready and ideally suited for direct to film and hybrid digital transfers. Visit graphicsflow.com to book a demo. Yeah.